JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Espresso recorded session with me, that is on Charles, because today's the 2nd of February, guys, 2022. So yeah, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Wednesday's morning session, uh, recorded session, as I mentioned before. Uh, so yeah, before we jump in, before we go further, as always, let's quickly have a, a read through our risk disclaimer. So yep, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, as always, um, quick um, mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, um, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFD Bank um, website and specifically our JFD research page, which uh, let me load up very quickly here just to uh, show you what I'm talking about. So this one right here, if you click on the research tab right there on the top, yep, it'll take you to our page, uh, which is updated on a daily basis. And I believe you can find some useful information there. So um, there we go. So yep, guys, check it out. Um, now, jumping into the charts, guys, the first one I'm going to pick up here is Nikkei 225. And now a good run to the upside. Everything's according to the plan, to the idea that I mentioned uh, yesterday that we, and uh, the, the idea that I mentioned on Friday as well, that uh, we might see a bit of a larger correction here to the upside. And we're actually getting that. So everything's look, working out nice and fine here. Um, the only thing is, of course, we are approaching this area, this 20, uh, this area near the 27,594 level right here, um, near the 21 day EMA and near this downside line. So um, in a way, we're basically approaching quite a strong area of resistance. And uh, we want to see if this is going to work out or not, if this is going to push through this downside line taken from the high of the 5th of January. Uh, if it if it will, then, well, uh, we could go maybe for some higher levels. But if it won't, then, well, I mean, if this downside line remains intact, then another slide could be possible. Of course, the positivity came in from the kind of the... Um, Yesterday, um, U.S. markets did trade uh, nicely in positive territory. Um, <clears throat> European indices as well were uh, were gaining. So uh, we are having this uh, nice kind of positivity right now kicking in. However, uh, in general, guys, I mean, you should be very careful because let's say, for example, last week we were, when we were selling off um, in, in the markets, um, everybody was talking about, you know, the rate hikes and the Fed, Fed hiking rates in the near future here um, so in a way if you know if and everybody was very bearish and uh, of course for obvious reasons um, but now we're seeing this you know opposite thing happening and we're seeing this push north um, the only thing is like I said if if the the concerns are still there I mean the uh, about the in, uh, raising interest rates so maybe this move is could be classed as just a, as a temporary correction this move this this move higher could be classed as a temporary correction so that's why do not exclude the downside scenario yes if we're going to start breaking some key resistance levels then yeah of course i mean we'll start looking at uh some higher levels but at the moment when we are for example like here on Nikkei when we're approaching this key resistance be very careful and cautious guys i guess like i said it could easily kind of you know reverse back down um same story with DAX, the German index. As you can see here, it did push higher yesterday. It did push north, but um, yeah, it did um, get a hold up near this downside line. So this arrow worked out nicely. So we got our uh, we got our whole uh, kind of re little retracement initially, as you can see here. And everything kind of happened in that one day, and then the next day we uh, saw a push towards this uh, downside line, which we managed to test. Now, in order to go for uh, higher levels 
well we would actually prefer to wait for a push above this uh, 15,729 territory 22 a uh, 28 ter zone some somewhere around here um, in order to get a little bit more comfortable with the upside and then of course we could start you know looking at some higher levels like for example uh, these this level right here uh, the 16,090 or even going further north uh, maybe towards the uh, the current all-time high near the 16,290 zone but again we'll get to that point if we do see that push through this downside line and push through this 15,728 barrier if we don't um, and uh, if we continue to hold here near this downside line, then, well, I mean, uh, another slide here could be possible. So be very careful with that today. Um, let's see how all this is going to play out um, <clears throat> from the kind of another perspective here. Uh, you can see that yesterday, for example, we formed a doji. Um, which, of course, tends to be a reversal signal. Now, again, if... Um, of course, if to trust the you know the all the TA rules and the books, and then yes, this could be seen as a as a good reversal sign. However, however, let's uh, take everything with a pinch of salt a little bit here, um, because at the moment, I mean, we are at a very tricky spot, and if the oh, uh, if the buyers you know continues to apply pressure here then yeah certainly we could clear up you know and then no um no doji here would help the sellers now the cash index uh it's currently trading um at around uh 15,716 20 zones so basically we are uh somewhere around here right now so yeah uh quite interesting so basically we've managed to overcome this downside line on the cash index but um yeah and to be honest i mean if if that's the case then all eyes are on this level on this 15,728 zone well that's going to be quite interesting in that case because then we, now our next target could be this one the high of the 20th of january near the 15,912 zone i'm going to drag this arrow up until here um, and then we'll take it from there guys for the downside i need to see a drop at least below yesterday's low in order to uh consider a move back down um and yesterday's low is roughly around that 15,537 territory uh nasdaq nasdaq 100 so of course yesterday the um the u.s markets uh, the u.s equity markets did perform quite well i mean we did have good earnings uh, coming out so in general if we like take a look at the heat map uh, from yesterday um, energy was the biggest performer um, energy was yeah as I said biggest performer followed by basic materials um, basic materials and financials guys so um, so yep that's uh, quite interesting to see here so finance yes as I said was one of the contributors uh, good contributors to the market um, energy of course you know Exxon Mobil did prefer, uh, did show good results uh, and yep that helped um, that helped the push push the market a little bit further uh, f kind of f further north so in general um everything is looking quite positive here for um for for the for the indices especially for example uh, nasdaq here um because we're approaching this downside line however the same concern remains as with the uh, dax i mean if uh, i mean if this downside line somehow continues to provide resistance however let me just quickly look at the cash index just bear with me one moment yes we are trading at around 15,100 36 zones so we it seems that we have overcome this um this barrier or just fractionally above this now again i don't like these situations when we're just fractionally above something here but at the moment i mean if it somehow stays above this downside line today then we could go for some higher levels however if you remember i talked about this highlighted territory right here this 15357 zone i would actually prefer to wait for a push above this barrier in order to go for some higher levels um for now for now i'm going to be very careful yes there is some positivity kicking 
in uh, into the market here but can it be maintained with all the concerns in the market I mean with of course if you you know you start reading the headlines and everything you might get scared because uh, yeah that's uh, that's not really helping the market that's not really helping the financial world so you know different geopolitical issues different uh, you know health issues so all these headlines are not really like I said working well for the market uh, but again for now I mean it seems that the market is driven by good earnings from the companies so we might see maybe a bit of positivity kicking in unless something yeah something uh, comes out uh, really uh, let's say bad then yeah we, that could help push the index back indices back down now um, in terms of um, oh by the way today for example what you can do here is keep your eyes on some of the mm, earnings Earnings and for example for Nasdaq, um, yep, um, you can keep an eye on uh, Facebook today or should I say Meta platforms. Uh, so yep, uh, that's uh, that's going to be quite interesting to see how how they you know what kind of results they are going to re release. We do have Alibaba coming out today as well, um, Qualcomm, T-Mobile. So and yeah, keep your eyes on that on those. Um, and uh, it's going to be quite interesting to see if if you know if, if 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 Facebook earnings can push Nasdaq a little bit higher here. Um, again, let's not over speculate for now. Look, just looking purely at this technical picture, uh, we can see that we have a downside line we are still below it however the cash index is kind of violating it right now can this downside line continue to hold uh, or should I say somewhere be an indicator of you know for good resistance um, well let's wait and see but for me for the upside I would prefer to wait for maybe for a push above this highlighted territory first uh, Dow Jones industrial average now this one also showing good results performing well um, I talked about this uh, recently and uh, oh let me just get rid of this arrow uh, yep old old arrow um, but basically as you can see here we managed to recover nicely here um, the cash index currently is showing um, a that the index is trading at around 35,425 something like that area um, so we're yeah above yesterday's close but uh, very near the uh, zero is zero point six as well 61.8 percent uh, retracement here on the Fibonacci very close so we've managed to reach that and the question is can we see a further push north um, now I'm not I'm going to get rid of the Fibonacci. I mean, you probably you, you understand that it's roughly around here, the 35,500 zone. Um, I don't need it anymore uh, because we didn't have our good retracement already. What I need here is I need to draw this uh, tentative downside resistance line taken from the high of the 5th of January. Now, um, I want to see if we're going to actually end up testing it, um, if, if we're going to end up testing it and then maybe breaking it. But again, like I said, let's keep an eye on the market today on the earnings and uh, for now uh, for now I would say if you're looking for something like higher than uh, wait for at least a push above this barrier right here the um, 35,661 35, zone right here uh, marked by the high of the 18th of January if we pop above it then we would already be placed above the uh, above this downside line and then of course we could aim for some higher levels like for example this one right here the 35,000 uh, sorry 36,514 zone and then so on and so on but we'll get to that point first I'm keeping an eye on this downside line to see if it holds or not uh, DXY dollar index so uh, yeah drifted lower um, I, I talked about this guys if you remember uh, and I said that if um, yeah if uh, if we hold here uh, if we hold and maybe you know if, if we hold around this area this 90 96 point point 46 then maybe you know maybe a bit of a rebound could be possible however if we break that then of course the next target is the 21 day EMA so in general what I was saying even before that that if we fall back below the 96.67 territory right here then this opens the door towards that 21 day EMA so so far kind of everything is working out nicely um, the only thing is now the question can what can this 21 day EMA provide uh, provide support if it can great we could see a nice rebound here and a push back to the upside if we cannot um, 
well i mean a further decline could be possible towards this upside line taken from the low of the 25th of may of uh 2021 so yeah for the upside pretty straightforward to push back above this 96.94 level is needed uh gold uh okay this one is kind of continues to be a bit of an annoying uh um a bit of an annoying kind of uh commodity trade because currently you can see that um yesterday i mean yesterday i talked about the i would remove the, the downside line i mean I, I removed some of the lines and oh sorry the upside line removed that one and i said that if we drive above this 180506 zone and we stay above it then yes we could go for some higher levels but as you can see we got our little tease we got our little false breakout here and then we go boom i mean we've drifted back down and fell back below the uh 208 ema and currently trading below it so in other words the emas are currently providing good resistance and uh yep that's what we're seeing right now um kind of I'm going to be I'm going to stay cautiously bearish on this one because um although yeah DXY is not looking maybe great um still gold is kind of really um let's say you know getting pushed away due to kind of the market the equity market uh, pushing back up because everybody's kind of you know it's a risk uh risk on environment right now everybody's uh, jumping back into stocks and uh yeah if suddenly that changes well you could we could see gold pushing maybe higher again you know but at the moment um yeah if we just judge from what we see right now it's um yeah it's a bit of a hold up here and below the t these emas the 21 day the 100 and the 208 emas and uh yeah if we continue to trade below those then i'll aim for the 1778 zone right here marked by the mm, the lowest point of january and then we'll take it from there um double tie oil very quickly on this one um so uh, this one, it, it seems like you can decide. I mean, at one point, I mean, it did stay above this uh, upper side of the rising channel, the one that I talked about. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's it pushed uh, above it. it uh, then you can see that yesterday we had a drop again below this. I mean, this is where probably investors might get frustrated with all this. Um, that's why I always say that wait for that daily close because, uh, well, I mean, that's what, exactly what you get here because you get that false breakout, but at the end of the day, it's still, excuse me, it still kind of ends up being above this above a certain level that we've drawn um and uh, yeah you can see that it stayed above that um you know rising channel pattern so in a way i would say there is still a good chance for this one to move higher um especially if it continues to trade above the upper side of that uh rising channel um Again, I'm not excluding the possibility also of having, you know, the same story here. Like, I mean, this, these, like these breakouts back down. Um, well, because that's, you know, that's the part of the game, to be honest. I mean, guys, if you're, you know, it's not everything is, it's not always, unfortunately, ideal. So, uh, yeah, so let's see how this is going to play out. Um, at the moment, I'm, like I said, I'm cautiously bullish as long as, and I'm going to probably stay bullish, actually, if, if it's going to stay above this upper side of the, uh, rising channel if it suddenly starts falling back below it and stays below it here for the day i mean then um yeah I'll, i'm back to kind of neutral territory um jumping into bitcoin uh btc usd so um yeah beautiful test of this downside line there we go guys 10th of november this line is taken from the high off uh 10th of november of last year and uh, we've managed to get a nice beautiful test of it i talked about this hurdle as well the 39,673 level and uh yep uh we've managed to kind of almost reach that and uh, we reached the 21 day ema so in other words uh, we had a fantastic hold up here very technical very nice beautiful um the big question here is what's going to happen now um let me adjust a few things here um, so basically from the shorter term perspective if we are looking for uh, if we are looking for some upside uh, then well we still need to see a break 
of this downside line and a push above the 39,673 territory, uh, which is the low of the 10th of January. Um, if we clear that and we stay above that, then yes, I will go for some higher levels. If we uh, if we drop below the subside line and we fall below the 36,674 level right here, then this is where we'll, we, could, we can consider maybe a bit of a move back down again. So at the moment, I would say we are at a very interesting spot. So let's see if we can squeeze something out of it. But um, until it kind of makes a stronger move here, I'm not really doing anything. Um, AUD USD. Um, so uh, again, um, we had a nice rebound, of course, uh, as understandable. Uh, with the equity market did jump back. I mean, a, a risk on a risk on environment kind of, you know, came back. And uh, yeah, so if um, if we are looking for some upside now this is where the problem is I mean this downside line is very tensitive and uh, I just this is you don't really focus on it too much because again it depends how you're gonna draw it you can draw it this way or maybe you can draw it this way right here so in other words I mean maybe we're still not uh, kind of done with the downside because we could just see part of the kind of uh, a larger correction uh, to the upside here um, so yeah in a way there's not really kind of um, much to say here um, at the moment um, I would say if it pushes above that 21 day EMA yes I'll aim for the upside um, but I'll aim for this downside line this tentative downside line and then I'll take it from there I want to see if it's going to hold or not if it does another slide could be possible if it doesn't then well we could see maybe a break of the 0 0.7229 level and then we could go for some higher levels uh, but uh, yeah for now I mean it's like I said I'm, I'm not saying that this is you know this is gonna turn around right now I mean if like I said keep your eyes on the market um, keep your eyes on the equity world and if that continues to you know to rally then we could see like I said this pair pushing a little bit further north uh, towards this downside line this is gonna be my initial target and then I'm gonna take it from there uh, USD JPY very quickly on this. Um, I talked about this yesterday. I said that we might see maybe a possible bullish flag here. Um, however, uh, what I said as well that maybe you could see a bit of a larger retracement here towards that 21 day EMA, which could get tested. And well, we got that retracement. Uh, we got that test. Um, now the big question here is can we see a rebound? Uh, <clears throat> um, Excuse me. Um, yes, again, everything kind of right now is leading leaning towards the uh, stock market because, um, well, I mean, every, there is a lot of fear at the moment, um, but at the same time, like I said, better, you know, good results, good earnings right now coming out from big companies. Uh, those are helping to push kind of outweigh all the other fears and push, you know, the equity, equity world in, uh, you know, further north. Um, not sorry, not further north, but to the upside. Uh, let's put it this way, because it's not further because we had our correction last week. So, um, but again, guys, I mean, all this can be short-lived um, at the moment. Let's keep an eye on this pair, for example. Uh, you can see here the Japanese yen uh, kind of was stronger a little bit yesterday uh, as still investors, um, you know, are kind of fearsome a little bit. So we have this kind of little discrepancy here uh, with the equity world. So in other words, if we're looking at this, and if we're, we want to consider maybe an, a, a move higher, well, at least wait for a push above, back above this hurdle, back above this 115.07. Um, if we don't drive, uh, drive back above it, then if we stay somewhere around here, I'm going to take a neutral stand. Um, if we start falling below the 21-day EMA, and we can, you know, can, then I could, yep, consider maybe a bit of a a, a move lower here towards the towards the 100-day EMA or this 100. 13.48 zone but again and also like I said keep your eyes on the equity world if suddenly that changes course to the downside then well we could see USD JPY drifting nicely lower here uh, USD CAD um, this one is a, another un, uncertain there's you know another pair which is kind of unclear a little bit because 
Uh, okay, one part uh, that I talked about it, I, ta I mentioned that if, um, you know, if when we were here, that you know, we started showing this kind of, you know, uh, I, this kind of willingness to move back down, I said that, yes, we could go lower, um, and uh, but my next target will be that 21-day EMA, which we managed to reach perfectly. Um, we rebounded from it. However, again, we're not really pushing higher again, uh, again here. So, in other words, what I'm seeing here right now is something like this. So we have our downside line, tentative one, of course, um, and we have our upside line, of course, also tentative. So both two of these short-term tentative, uh, tentative trend lines, one upside, one downside, are kind of forming a potential uh, triangle here and uh, uh, showing that you know the pair could be getting into a bit of a squeeze here so that means that in the kind of in the near term here we could see the pair moving uh, up and down here in in between these two lines mm, so that means what uh, in order let's say if you're looking for a bigger better move here uh, then you need to wait for a break out of out of this you know triangle pattern but uh, if you're looking for something short term then well keep your eyes on the 21 day EMA for for now I mean if we drop below it then we'll go lower but um, in order to get let's say a little bit more comfortable with further declines a drop below that 1.26 uh, 10 territory somewhere around here would be needed um, GBP USD. Now this one is a little bit of a mess. Um, again, uh, previously when I talked about this, I said that um, if we drop somewhere below this 1.3375 territory again, then yes, I'll aim for lower levels. But instead, we got a rebound and we came back close to this downside line taken from the high of the um, the first of June of last year. So if, of course, some of you maybe are looking at uh, maybe a potential move higher here. To be honest, I will take a very careful approach here and I'll wait for a push above all of the EMAs before I will uh, let's say consider maybe higher levels here at the moment I'm just gonna observe this one because it's not really um, in my ideal kind of scenario um, so yeah for the downside we could start looking at lower levels if we drop below the 1.3437 zone but again like I said I, I would prefer to see it drop below the 1.3375 area first and then kind of go for the downside for the upside as I said a push above all of the EMAs might do the trick for a few more buyers uh, Euro GBP. Now, one of my not least favorite, my least favorite pairs. I don't really look at this one because, again, it. To be honest, it it really annoys me sometimes. I mean, it's on one hand, it's sometimes very. It seems to be very technical, but actually, it's not. So it's kind of a sometimes it's a, just a random walk here. Um, so yeah, I mean, if we try to apply technical analysis on this right now, we can see that yes, the pair is trading below this downside line taken from the high of the 9th of December um, and uh, we are struggling but we are struggling below the, with this 0 0.8305 zone which is currently yes providing good um, good support and uh, yeah um, if we if we clear this if we clear that area then this will confirm a forthcoming lower low and further declines are possible and uh, just to kind of in contrast where we are right now we can see that we are approaching the levels uh, let me just put this one on the chart very quickly so we are approaching the levels of here I mean the lowest point of February of 2020 and uh, we are also I think this is another area uh, the lowest point of December of 2019 guys so this whole area is roughly um, around let me just zoom in here a little bit uh, roughly around that um, 0 0.8280 territory so area so approximately around there guys so that could be our next target 0 0.8280 if we clear the 0 0.8305 I do understand we're not really gonna gaining a lot here but again we are we would be then approaching quite a strong area of support so be very careful with that so we have seen this decline uh, quite significantly and so we have seen the euro declining against the pound quite significantly 
can this change course? Um, well, we need some confirmation then first. Uh, of course, initially we'll start from the break of this downside line when, and if we do get that break, then we could also break the 21 day EMA. So everything's kind of, like I said, uh, kind of jamming in into one here. And uh, yeah, I, this could open the door. If we do break above this area somewhere, this could uh, open the door to some higher levels. And that area is approximately near the 0 0.8360. So keep that in mind. And finally, your USD guys. Um, so um, we managed to rebound, and as I said, keep your eyes today on the economic, or not today, in general this week. Keep your eyes on the economic calendar because today we have the US ADP numbers coming out. So some of you, some people like to gauge, you know, uh, their expect, kind of, you know, build their expectations um, on the NFP number, which will come out on Friday based on the ADP number. But again. This has been proven several times that, you know, it doesn't really always uh, go hand in hand with each other. So you can keep an eye on it. Um, there we, there might be some maybe uh, fluctuation in the Euro USD on after after the after the news. However, the main of course the main um, news uh, the main event to keep an eye on is tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, the ECB interest rate decision, which probably is not going to change but um but the press conference that's going to be quite uh, which will uh, be 45 minutes after the uh, interest rate decision so yeah um keep your eyes on this one don't be surprised if we don't see much movement here today on euro usd maybe the the whole movement could be saved uh, for tomorrow and for Friday's NFP numbers. Um, from the technical side, again, I'll go back to the same idea. A break of this downside line would be needed in order to go for some higher levels. For the downside, I would need to see a drop somewhere below this 1.1173 zone. And then, yes, we could consider a bit of a move to the downside here. So keep that in mind. So, guys, that's it for this session. I really appreciate you kind of you know watching this recorded session i really appreciate that thank you very much guys i really do so um if you want to catch me or catch my video tomorrow is always roughly around uh, seven o'clock gmt time maybe a little bit after uh when I allow me to uh, upload the video properly so and uh yeah guys we'll take it from there we'll see you know what the market has uh, prepared for us for today um be very careful, stay safe, um, you know, keep your stop losses in place, don't over trade guys. Um, so yeah, most importantly, don't over trade. Um, thank you very much and bye bye.